Yesterday on Dodge Garage website, I was reading this article about the horsepower locator coming soon. The locator will tell you where every allocation is and each trim or dealer can order from the XXT to the Scat Packs, Wild Bodies, Hellcats, Red Eyes, Super Stocks. While this article lists some great information, what if I told you there's a section in there that should leave every Dodge fan very concerned? That there is no protection from dealers going on a price gouging spree and nothing to stop them from preventing you from ordering the last challenges and charges from Dodge. Tim Kinesis told us during Speed Week that every 2023 trim of the Challenger and Charger will be allocated to dealers and went ahead and told us that people are not going to be happy. Let's roll back the footage. Lock up your allocation as fast as you can for that last year. Now, I'm not going to lie. This is going to be really tough. It's going to be almost an impossible task to make everybody happy. We're, we're not going to. But what we can do, and this is important, we can allocate every single unit that we're going to build for that final run in advance. So everyone will get one shot, one opportunity to get one of those final Brampton Hemi cars. So in October this year, we're going to tell you every unit that we're going to build for the final 12 months of production by trim and by dealer. And then we're going to update that weekly on DodgeGarage.com. So you're going to know where every single Hemi Charger, Challenger, RT, Scat Pack, Hellcat, Red Eye, you name it, where it's going. Think about it as a horsepower locator because we don't want any customers putting in orders at dealers that may not earn allocation for what they're looking for. We don't want you waiting for your dream car that's never going to get delivered. The horsepower locator based on this article is going to let you see every dealer that will have an allocation for a Hellcat or whatever trim that you want to order. And you'll be able to check pricing allegedly at multiple dealerships before placing an order. And this is where the first problem arises. How is the system going to check dealers who are charging after you place an order? Or if you call a dealer that you think is going to honor the price on the horsepower locator website, they tell you that there is a ordering fee just to place an order for one of the last Hemi cars ever. Does anyone really think a dealer is going to inflate the price on a website they know Dodge is allegedly monitoring? Is Dodge going to actively monitor if a dealer tries to make you pay an ordering fee or some kind of market adjustment fee, or if they sneak up fees after the car is built, then it gets delivered and puts you in a take it or leave it situation? There is not a single place in this entire article that says anything about what will happen to dealers that pull bait and switch tactics. Why not come out and say, that if dealers charge over MSRP, we will pull the remaining 2023 allocations. It's not like Dodge doesn't have the power to do so. They're picking and choosing which dealers get final additions, what dealers get allocations, so why not enforce MSRP? If Dodge is really listening to fans, no one wants to get into a bidding war for a 16-year-old car that's already overpriced and will be even more overpriced when dealers start to tack on ADM fees. If Dodge was really listening to the fans, I'm pretty sure everyone will want power dollars back for this final year to combat these crazy prices. Just saying. It says right here in the article, once the Dodge brand knows exactly how many examples of each trim will be built for the Challenger and the Charger, allocation information will be sent to dealers across the United States and that same information will be available to potential customers through the Dodge Garage horsepower locator. So why not come out and enforce MSRP? It's hard now to even get a TRX in California. How much is a final Hellcat going to cost in the 10th largest car market in the world? Not the 10th largest in the US, the 10th largest versus other countries in the world. And the horsepower locator we also find out is going to have specific sections to find certain things. You'll also be able to search for power broker dealers, which I don't see why anyone would care at this point. Jailbreaks will be on the locator and will show which power broker dealer you can get them from. And it's not like anyone knows when stage kits are coming. At this point, I don't know why Dodge would even announce stage kits if they weren't ready and passed with carb approval. First we heard December 2021, then it got pushed around March, then it got pushed around summertime, and now Dodge doesn't even mention stage kits in any interviews over the last several months. I would have expected to say something on day one of speed week 
when Tim Kinesis will talk about the current cars, but we got no news. The next special section is for the final editions. Those cars will only be listed where they are going. This is because they can't be ordered or configured how you would like. Everyone is going to know exactly where these cars are going, and I can imagine the horror stories now about how much money someone overspends for a car that they think is going to be a good investment and sit around for a few years collecting dust. For example, I don't see a difference in price for used 2019 Charter Daytonas. It's the same car as a Scat Pack, just with some stitching and some stickers. It's not special compared to a Scat Pack, and the used market reflects that. The only edition I would say would carry a premium is the Super B edition because it is the only charger to ever come with that suspension. The King Daytona and Black Ghost edition, they are nothing but gel brakes with stickers. I don't see anything special about those two cars compared to the pre-configured gel brake models that Dodge showed us last year. They're all going to be rare, but it doesn't mean that they're better than the other cars that came around it. Any vehicle with a Hellcat engine in it will be sought after, period. Give it five years of these kids stealing these horsepower unicorns, people wrecking them, and people not taking care of them, every Hellcat is going to be worth more money because of the engine and not some stupid stickers. Just saying. But this is the part that has me worried the most. If a dealer has 50 allocations for a Hellcat, three customers order a Hellcat, but the dealership can order five for themselves. The allocations also count dealer stock, and the next week when the horsepower locator opens up again, that dealership will only have 42 allocations left. So now the problem is, will dealers be capped on how many cars they can order for inventory? If a dealer orders 40 out of 50 cars for their inventory and charges 20k ADM on those cars, is Dodge going to do anything about it? The dealers know exactly how many Hellcats, Red Eyes, Superstocks, and Jailbreaks are getting made. They know exactly where all the cars are going. What's to say they don't do a market adjusted price because customers in that area don't have a choice to get a car that they have and they know that the other dealers near them can't get one. Since everyone knows where every trim is going, dealers can say weekly, oh, that dealer across town can't order any more Hellcats or Jailbreaks or Wild Bodies Let's add 10k because we're the only dealer in the area that can get that car now. Anyone that went through the nonsense in 2021 and getting a Ram TRX to MSRP know there was a lot of dealers charging 10, 20, 30, 40, 50k ADM for those trucks because they knew that Ram could not keep up with production and trucks were slowly rolling out. And we are going to be in for a long year with these Dodge vehicles if you guys don't already know what dealers don't charge MSRP or pull these little bait and switch tactics. I'll give you a shiny example of why this is a problem. Do you guys remember this California dealer had 16 brand new Dodge Demons sitting on their lot just last year? They sat on those 16 Demons for four years at $200,000 a pop. The funny thing is, the yellow one in this picture is the same one I called that dealership about five years ago and was gonna buy it at that time but they wanted $175,000 for it, and obviously I passed. But what's not to stop the same thing from happening with a $200,000 final edition because it's more exclusive than the Demon, or a $150,000 jailbreak because they are barely making any. Look at the horsepower configurator, and you can't find them in the area, sir or ma'am. That is what you gotta pay for the market adjusted price. Just saying. So I hope Dodge sends an eternal memo to dealers to discourage them from doing ADM markups or at least say something to the outlets that they're going to strip allocations and award them to the dealers who are not charging extra fees. There is already a Hellcat engine shortage that Chrysler admitted to, which is why we don't have a 300 Hellcat. But we'll find out in a couple weeks how many trims will be available. Apparently Dodge is going to mess with the allocation system to give them a few months reserve just in case the line goes down for shortages, or chip issues, or issues with the line. The article tries to make you feel like the final year is going to be so great and transparent, but we all live in the real world, and those of us that has purchased the Landis vehicles in the last couple years knows the nonsense that you had to go through from thousands of dollars in price increases to additional dealer markups to vehicles taking almost a year to get delivered. But I can see the horror stories we are about to hear about these ADM games that these dealers are about to do. I'm on the list for a Hellcat, but if I can't get the final car, 
I'm probably just gonna order a Red Eye Wild Body, but I have to kind of keep a budget in mind since I still have a Hummer EV and I wanna order another TRX next year. So I'm definitely getting a Red Eye Wild Body over spending a few grand more for a jailbreak. I don't see the allure of spending more money for the same car just with more stickers and some interior pieces that I can simply order from a dealer and just pop it in the car. But let me know what you guys think. Am I being paranoid or ahead of the curve when it comes to dealers having the ability to order a lot of Hellcats for themselves and just sit on them for years with ADMs? They know these will be the final cars and nothing like that will be ever attainable to the average person ever again. But make sure you guys like the video. It really helps to spread on YouTube. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Pick up some merch on your way out. And until the next time, I'm out.